Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday of Holy Week. And uh, the story I want to focus on today is uh, from Mark 11. And it's the story of Jesus cleansing the temple. In, the, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, the story is set in Jesus' final week into Jerusalem. He goes into Jerusalem, and one of the things he does is go into the temple. And this is a famous story. Many people are familiar with it. Uh, it's dramatic. He forms uh, uh, these whips and turns over the tables of the money changers, driving them out of the temple. Uh, it's, it's rather dramatic. He, there's all sorts of art. If you look up art for this, you'll find some fascinating both classical pictures, but you might find some uh, interesting contemporary pictures where Jesus is driving out uh, business people or uh televangelists or all sorts of people are being driven out of the temple i've seen all sorts of kinds of art over the years about this particular incident yes, it has almost for some people it has almost a political overtone um but i'm, I'm not going to really touch on any of that today but I, I would encourage you to look at the art but when jesus uh, cleanses the temple in in the mark account he uh he says my house shall be a house of prayer for the nations, but you've made it a den of robbers. And so I just briefly today want to meditate on this line, my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. As we think about Jesus uh, in this final week uh, headed toward the cross, it will climax in the cross. So each story is leading us uh, to the cross. And so here we have a story of Jesus going into the temple, uh, this dramatic event, and then crying out, My house shall be a house of prayer for all nations. Now, in one sense, uh, I think we could read that statement in two very different kinds of ways, both meaning a similar thing, but just from a different angle, I guess. So first, it is a, a place of prayer, a house of prayer for all nations. And, and this would be directly connected to the uh, Genesis 12 commission to Abraham, that Israel, that uh, that Abraham's offspring will uh, be a blessing, bring blessing to all the peoples or all the families of the earth, and also to the sense of Israel's calling as a royal priesthood. And so here you have uh, the temple or the house of the Lord as a place where the people of God pray for all the nations of the earth. So it's a place uh, set apart, not simply to pray for the blessings of the uh, chosen people, but for all nations. It's a place of intercession for all nations. And I think at this moment uh, in our culture, especially as we think in terms of a, a worldwide virus that's affecting every nation, people have an awareness that uh, our difficulty goes far beyond our, our local towns or big cities in America, uh, that, that in one sense all nations are being affected and there is an earnestness to both pray for the nations, but also to ask how can we help, uh, especially some of the impoverished places, what can we do, people uh, giving to support some of the uh, th those refugees or those who are in very vulnerable places. So it creates an awareness, not simply maybe of the virus around the world, but those who are vulnerable all around the world, which would be very uh, consistent with, I think, some of what's happening in Jesus' ministry. So we think of the temple as a place of prayer for all nations, not a place of commerce, um, not a place of political maneuvering, not a p place where people are yeah, gaining in power or uh, debating. It is a place set apart to pray for the blessing on all nations. But now we could also, uh, in light of uh, some of the images both from Zechariah and Isaiah and some of the prophets, we see the temple um, as a place where all nations will come streaming to the temple. So there is this image, uh, Isaiah, in fact, the Isaiah reading from the Book of Common Prayer today has this image that when the servant of the Lord comes, he will not simply redeem the people of God, uh, Israel, but he will redeem the Gentiles as well. Um, but there are also images of all nations streaming up to Mount Zion uh, to uh, hear the wisdom of the Lord. 
And so all now all nations are coming to the temple. And, and in that sense, uh, the temple has a place for the Gentiles, who, for the non-Jews. There are, uh, it's actually divided into different courts. And so you have a court of the Gentiles. But in today's story, it just so happens that's where the money changers are. Uh, so the very place where all nations could come and pray is now a place of commerce, which is another way to think about this story, is that uh, the, the Jesus driving out the money changers is uh, making room for the nations to come in. Uh, but we also, if we step back from this particular story and look at Jesus' larger ministry, he's often moving to the marginalized. Those who are blind or deaf or lepers, those who would not be able to go to the temple because of their defects. And he's healing them. So he's taking those who are marginalized, who are outside uh, the camp, who are, who are, beyond, who are not allowed to gather in, in, in the, the temple, and he's uh, healing them and restoring them so that they can be restored to temple worship. And so now you have all nations, uh, both those who, all the different divisions, you might say, of Jew and Gentile, but also even the J divisions within Judaism, that uh, all are being welcomed to the temple. But now, if we continue to follow the story, we come to realize that the temple that Jesus is ultimately speaking about is not that physical temple there on the grounds. It is his own body. He is the one who will draw all nations to himself. It is in his body that a new temple will be established. And uh, we might see this specifically worked out in Ephesians, where he is... Uh, he says he's taking the division, in Ephesians 2, the division, the hostility, the wall of hostility between Jew and Gentile has been taken into himself. So now in the cross, we don't simply see Jesus uh, bearing the hostility between humanity and God, but he's, he's bearing the, the hostility between the nations, between Jew and Gentile, between male and female, between all the different distinctions. He, his body has become the place of peace. And so now his body... Uh, both his physical body in the cross, but also the people he raises up that is ref are referred to as his body now become living stones of a new temple. A new temple gathered in Christ, made up of all peoples, all classes, um, all, all races. Uh, a, a wide range of people are now drawn in to become a new community, a new family, uh, that now this new family is bringing the blessings of God and in praying for the blessings of God to extend to all nations and, in fact, all the cosmos. May the Lord bless you this day. Amen.